Hi everybody, I'm Erin and this is Waiting Moose. Tonight I want to do a discussion about DNFs and reviews. Aha. A lot of discussion happens over this topic. Do you DNF books? I do. When you do get DNF them, do you review them? I do. Yes, you can hate me. My first rule for DNFing and reviewing a DNF book, there are books that I have DNF'd that I don't review because my intent is to go back and read them. Um, I started listening to Tom Sawyer earlier this year and things just got out of hand in my life and I was unable to finish listening to it before it was due back. And so I let it go back to the library with full intent at some point in the future of reading Tom Sawyer again. There are other books like that that I in my, in, I know that I will probably read, and there are books that I've started reading in the past that it was just not the right time for me to read that book, so instead of forcing myself to read it and not enjoying it, I've set it aside or returned it to the library and with the, the goal of reading it again. I won't review those books because I know I'm going to read them again and it's not, like, there's no point in reviewing it. However, if I start reading a book and I hate that book so much that I can't finish it, or if I don't care about the characters, if, if there's something about that book that makes me not able to finish it, I will review it on Goodreads. I might even talk about it on here. And there's a reason for that. I will make it clear, number one, I will make it clear that I did not finish the book. I will tell you that I did not finish it, and then I will tell you why I did not finish it. Because I think that is valuable information for anyone trying to decide if they want to read a book or not. You don't even need to know if you share the same interests as I do. If I tell you that I didn't finish Fifty Shades of Grey and I detail scenes and situations that made that book unpalatable for me, that should give you enough information to decide for yourself if you want to read it or not. That is the purpose of a book review. That's how I use book reviews. I read them on Goodreads to decide whether or not I want to read books. <sighs> book reviews have become this vendetta where in a lot of cases on Goodreads, if you've been on Goodreads for a while, there's been authors go off the rails. And there was actually a, a site, a website, created about the booktube bully, or the Goodreads bullies, not booktube, Goodreads bullies. Stop the Goodreads bullies. Because there was a group of reviewers that when an author did something not related to their book, not related, like, you know, on Twitter or on their blog or commented or responded to a review of their book, they were instantly given just hundreds of one-star reviews from people that never read the book but because of the author's behavior would flag the books as no, don't read you know all kinds of things right author behaving badly there's all this stuff so i take reviews with a grain of salt which is why i try to give you enough information in the book review to make your own call about whether or not the book is for you because not every book is for me but that doesn't mean it's not for you I try to give you that information. I try to do it in a way that is not attacking the author, that is clear and concise, and that has value. I don't, I mean, I, I may be passionate about it, and I'm pretty sure if you go and you find my review of Fifty Shades of Grey, there's others, but Fifty Shades of Grey is the one that off the top of my head, I can, I can tell you that I have ranted about in real life to people. If you find my review of that on Goodreads, I might be ranting. I might be one of those reviews that people read and just go, wow, you took that too seriously. I try not to be, uh, but sometimes there's just that much emotion. Fair enough, you're allowed to do that. But when I'm trying to decide whether or not I want to read the book, I don't want to make that decision based on somebody who's trying to force the world to boycott an author's book because they don't agree with the author. Which brings me to problematic books. No, it doesn't. I'm not going to talk about problematic books right now. Nope. I'm not. I have even, I've given a two-star rating to a book that I did not finish. And I've said that the, the writing was fine. And that, you know, like, I will tell you what I liked about it. But I will also tell you that there was something in that book that I could not finish. 
that made it so I could not finish. And I will tell you what that is. So that is the way I read and review and don't read books. Actually, I'd like to hear your feedback on it because obviously everyone does it differently. And I, I'm, I'm interested. I want to know, do you DNF books? When you DNF books, do you, do you give them a rating and a review on Goodreads? I tend to... Um, that's the other thing, actually, is when I'm on Goodreads, if I give a book lower stars, like three or less stars, I really try to justify why I'm giving it three or less stars. I write that review. If I'm giving books four and five stars, yeah, I might tell you a bit about the book. I might try to give you enough information. But if I'm giving a book four or five stars, I liked it. You're probably going to get more interesting information about that book from other reviews than me sitting there going, oh, this was awesome. Um, but I do try to go beyond, oh, this was awesome. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I get lazy. So, again, thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you guys later. Bye.